Hey there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and this is a quick review of this little beauty here. This is the Skywatcher Heritage 130p Dobsonian Telescope. What a mouthful of a name. Um, as the name suggests, it's a 130mm aperture, a parabolic mirror as you can see. And well, the real um, sort of party trick of this telescope is the fact that it is collapsible. Which, well, I suppose we'll dive straight into the review. Um, obviously the fact that it's collapsible means you can store it in a lot uh, less space than if it was a full um, tripod telescope with counterweights and all the rest of it. And obviously just the fact that you can collapse the tube itself is definitely a big um, space saving bonus particularly if you're like me and live on a tiny boat um, where space is definitely at the premium. But, well, one of the first things that that raises as a question that people often ask is does it mean that the tube itself is unstable or a bit flimsy but it is rock solid, it's got to be said to you. Um, tighten it up with these two little screws here. Once it's locked in place you are looking at a very solid little uh, telescope. One of the things that a lot of people as well find a little bit uh, disconcerting is the fact that the mirror here is only on one little um, strut. But once again, I've not had any problems. Um, obviously, you can easily adjust that. And likewise, on the back, you've got your screws for adjusting the primary mirror. And it's got to be said, out of the box, I've got a perfect crystal clear image using this. Um, well, really, there's not much to say about the telescope itself beyond that. Uh, you've got a red dot finder scope at the front here, and I personally love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But even with normal telescopes, I tend not to use the finder scopes of a more traditional sort of nature. And I just look straight up from the back of the telescope to try and find things in the sky. So obviously having a red dot, which once you've aligned it with the telescope, which is straightforward and nice and easy, Obviously then being able to look back uh, from the back of the telescope you've obviously then got the perfect sort of indicator of where the telescope's pointing in the sky. So that I'm a huge fan of but it's certainly not for everybody. Um, and I suppose finally, I'm not 100% what the um, technical term is. Alright. Right then, as I've just had to stop recording while the boat goes past, I thought we'll change camera angles so you can have a closer look at this telescope. Like I say, the focuser here is um, a little unusual and if I was trying to put a camera and all sorts of bits and pieces like that in, I can imagine that it might be a little bit awkward, but for just putting an eyepiece in and then obviously, well, if you twist the focus, I've been able to get crystal clear images and well when it comes to things like uh, just general stars and all that sort of stuff you can focus them down to nice white points i hope that the birds by the way aren't interfering too much of the sound on this recording um, and i mean well now that it's summer it's like a nice sort of cluster like the beehive cluster for example been having absolutely fantastic views of stuff like that through the scope and then obviously you got planets up at the minute like Saturn and Jupiter where once again just being able to focus it nice and clearly and well it is just fantastic. Um, now one of the things that's definitely worth noting because this is one of these big old Dobsonian uh, mounts obviously it's very low so if you're going to be wanting to spend a lot of time out with this scope I would definitely get yourself a little kneeling mat or something like that just to try and help save your knees. Um, now personally I don't have any problem using it as a Dobsonian mount and it's, well, it's nice and simple just steadily move it around following whatever you're looking at but when it comes down to it if you really really wanting to do some high level astronomy I don't think you'd have this telescope for a start but obviously it's going to make tracking objects smoothly for long periods of time a little bit difficult so as another boat moves into view I better um, start to wrap this video up a little bit quicker otherwise <laughs> we'll be here all day um, it comes with two eyepieces a 25mm and a 10mm which through this uh, 650mm focal length gives you 26 magnification and 65 which the 26 is excellent obviously for just general observing large patches of the sky you'll see a little bit of detail obviously planets like Saturn and Jupiter are still going to be small at 65 times magnification but certainly to be included um, when you buy it they're 
Well, good enough. One of the accessories that I've added to this that I think is personally the best of all the ones that I've got is the um, Celestron Omni 4mm eyepiece, which when you're dealing with a 650mm uh, focal length gives you 162 and a half magnification. Now it suddenly becomes a lot more difficult to focus at that level, but once you get a good crystal clear image on something like uh, Saturn and Jupiter, you really do have a fantastic view for well, a relatively cheap scope like this. And it's certainly something that, well, for the price, I don't think you can beat it. Um, I suppose on that note, I will wrap things up. Um, I hope, like you say, that it hasn't been too um, poor sound quality recording out here in the middle of nowhere. Got Blake Mere just across the way there, uh, unrelated to the telescope, but a nice little bit of scenery for you. Um, yeah, ultimately, I do think this is definitely one of my favourite telescopes that I've used. Personally, this suits my needs absolutely down to the ground of saving space. It's a fantastic telescope that I've been able to get some great views with. I am very pleased with it for the money. I suppose, on that note, I've pretty much summed up that I really do like this telescope. So I'll say make sure you check out my other videos for a load of boat life and also a load of um, random astronomy videos and other telescope and binocular reviews. And until the next time, make sure you subscribe, uh, like the Facebook page, we've got well over 200 likes on there now, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, if there's a rush in my voice, it's because there is another boat coming down. So I'll say thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, have a great day, and farewell.